I guess I was looking for somewhere to do a proper campaign again in the UK, which I hadn't really done properly for a few years. Sure, yeah, I fished on Thorny Weir and really enjoyed my fishing down there. Caught some good fish, but I was looking for maybe a bigger challenge, maybe bigger fish. A couple of years ago now, Ollie Davis had uh, kindly sort of shown me round the Horton complex again, which is crazy really because it's only about four miles from where I live and uh, I hadn't actually looked at those lakes for about 25 years, at least 25 years. And so, yeah, I took the opportunity and uh, forgotten just how nice they were. Really nice lakes, real variety, and of course some really big fish. Uh, the one that really stood out to me was actually the island lake because it was a bit more what I was used to, you know, using boats. Uh, it's a big piece of water, 70 acres. Didn't know too much about the fish and I didn't really want to know, to be honest. Um, I am a bit like that when I go into like, a new project or a new water. I like to find out things. I don't really like to know where people have caught fish from. Uh, don't really want to know too much about the fish. You know, I like the bit of mystery and I like finding stuff out for myself. So anyway, when the chance of a ticket came up, I grabbed it with both hands because I knew that this was what I was going to get into for at least the best part of the year, or at least I thought to it. I knew I was going to find some fishing I liked somewhere in amongst all those waters. On this lake, only solid boats are allowed, no inflatables. I mean, years ago now, Joan bought me a big 252 actually bought it down at Chez Pierre's on the banks of Cassian as a Christmas present. And yeah, for the last probably eight or ten years it had just sat over Mayfield Lake and they used it over there for their work parties and whatever and you know I hadn't used it because I'd been using inflatables. Now was the perfect time to get it out of retirement and uh, get some use out of it again which was really nice actually. I was looking forward to getting in the old Bic again. And I planned on getting down for the draw because all the bailiffs are going to be there. You need to get your boat checked, your life jacket checked and all that sort of thing. I didn't realise how busy it was going to be actually. So anyway, I got down for the draw. There was a lot of people there and they were all sort of huddled in their little groups talking. I felt a little bit out of place. I just sort of went into one of the swims and I was looking out of the lake. And uh, it was Mike Franklin actually who came down and, and sort of said hello and we got chatting. And he introduced me to Mick, the head bailiff. And uh, yeah, th then I felt a lot more at home. And then I also spotted Dave Lane and Mozza, Lee Morris, who I know well. And uh, yeah, I felt a lot better then. Some friendly faces and uh, yeah, so we got on with the draw. I felt I, wasn't, I really wasn't there to catch a fish. I was just there to get a feel for the place, try and suss it out a little bit, see if I liked it really because you know, I had no experience of this place at all, and for all I know, I might have set up and thought, nah, this ain't for me. Um, and, you know, sort of packed up and moved on. So, very much an exploratory trip, that first one. And Snags 2, it was, yeah, a nice swim, you know, out on the, the first island, uh, the biggest island that you can fish from. There's three islands in the lake. And, uh, yeah, certainly in the early part of the year, the main focus seems to be around the first island. Big gusty southwesterlies were blowing through, and uh, yeah, it was quite stormy. And uh, there was a big tree come down next to me. They'd just built a new clubhouse actually on the island, and uh, I heard this tree go, jumped out the bivy, and it actually landed on the roof of the clubhouse. So there's a bit of repair work to be done on that. But thankfully, it didn't come my way because, um, well, it would have hit the bivy if it had fallen my way. Thankfully, it didn't. Well, this is going to be it for now anyway. I haven't seen a fish. I've been all around the lake, around the whole lake, and some good looking areas at the top, but didn't see anything. And the only place I actually saw a fish was where I first pushed the boat out, just in front of the car park. I went out there and one swam across in front of me. So, as I've got nothing else to go on, um, and the swims that are 
produce fish are all taken. So this is it. Give it a go in here. <sighs> Sod's law, isn't it? Should stop and speak to people. I walked past the bloke on the island earlier without knowing it was Mozza. <sighs> so I think all the swims are taken, they come across here and set up. And uh, lo and behold, bloke's packed up and it's Mozza packed up with you all alone, which was certainly one swim that I fancied fishing on the island gives me access to at least a bit of that margin where the fish are coming from so uh, well happy days i've got a swim well, it's a different day today sunny and windy yesterday and rainy and flat calm today looks good though carpy conditions for sure but um, nothing happening so far anyway. But I have seen fish, there is the odd fish out there. Um, I had one close to where I saw a fish feeding yesterday afternoon, but nothing happened and gone out there this morning. And yeah, fish are still there. So I've moved it a little bit as close as I dare go really to the snags. You know, it's, they, they want to be right in the back of the snags really. So. I've gone as close as I sort of dare go in the hope that I can sort of tempt one out. You know, I've seen them in there, I've seen the fish, and they are clouding up. So, watch this space. Hopefully, before long, we'll get a bit of action. And we're off the mark. Well, it's not a big one, but it is the first one. And that's always welcome. Always nice to get off the mark. So uh, we first island lake car. I'm sure there'll be more and uh, hopefully bigger. But um, yeah, it's a start. Here we go. For that. Off you go, sunshine. So I'd gone in there with me same little pop-up rig that I've been using well for most of the year really. I'd used it on Thorny Weir. It's good effect and caught some really good fish out of there on it. Some of the, the biggest on the complex really. So it made sense just to carry on with that and come on here with the, the same. And it worked, got me a fish. You know, 25 pound or 35 pound skin link stiff. That was the boom section. And a, a chod link section with a little uh, size eight claw hook. The next bit of action actually came about almost by mistake. I was in the 37 swim and uh, seen a couple of fish, but there wasn't much happening. And the plan was to move down into spring gates. I felt like there was more fish there. Uh, but with the weed coming up, I remembered that there was someone had left a weed rake over on Viper's Point. And the thought was, right, I'll get over to Viper's Point, borrow that weed rake and, uh, you know, rake a couple of spots. That was the plan. So yeah, about up past six in the morning, something like that, I shot over, reeled my rods in, shot over to Vipers, 
just as I was going in on, on Viper's Point, there was no one else around there, I saw the fish in front, like quite close into the edge where the weed had started coming up. There was quite a number of fish, but maybe 20, 15, 20 fish, all cruising up and down that edge through the weed where it was quiet. And there were some good ones as well. You know, the first couple of fish I saw, one of them looked to, you know, reasonable 40, decent 40, but certainly a um, couple of decent 30s there as well. Uh, and then I, I just thought to myself, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> You've got fish here, there's no one here, there's fish in front of you. Go and get your rods. So, uh, yeah, I, I sneaked back out in the boat, shot across the lake, got me gear and uh, got me rods and, and shot back to Vipers. Well, the den, actually, it was. Um, it's like a double swim, Vipers and den, but the fish were on the den side. So, yeah, sneaked in there. Just, I mean, it was literally just an underarm flick to where the fish were. You could actually see the little clear spots in amongst the weed. It was only two, three foot deep. So that was all I did, underarm, cut the pop-ups onto the, the clear spots. I was getting liners all the time, wondering if I was ever going to get a bite there or not. Uh, yeah, and then just out the blue, it absolutely screamed off and carried on going. So I knew that was a run, sure enough. Got me second fish. I was certainly starting to get a feel for the lake. You know, I hadn't done anything great. I'd, I'd only done a few nights, but I just get that feeling. And it can be a big water or a small water. Um, that's not the thing, but I just get that feeling that I want to be there fishing more. And I was getting that feeling with the island lake. So I was starting to actually find a few fish around uh, the lake. You know, I was seeing quite a few smaller ones, but I was, I was certainly seeing some big chunks as well. It was quite a standard thing, certainly in that early part of the year, to have a, a look off the bridge that divides the Island Lake and uh, K1. Because it's quite a, it seems to be a magnet for the fish. They seem to be drawn to it all the time. And uh, yeah, one evening I saw a lovely big chunk there. Didn't know what fish it was at the time, but it was this big sort of like leather, two-tone on one side. Turns out they call it the two-tone leather. <laughs> um, but it was a big, Big, big chunk, certainly high 40s, you know, so that sort of whetted the appetite. And like I said, I didn't know much about the fish before, so it was good to be seeing these oh, lovely fish and they were all brand new to me. I remember one morning I was in the 37 swim again and it looked better in Vipers. I wanted to be on Vipers, you know, just to get that view of the lake. Uh, but there was someone in there, I think it was Laney actually, but being Laney, he didn't stop long, you know, he, he was always on the move. Uh, but I sort of jumped in after him, you know, I see him packing up and moving, so I thought, well, yeah, I'll take my chance uh, to get in there, and, you know, I felt, felt pretty happy once I was in there, because you just get that view of the lake and you see anything that's happening. Now, what did happen, uh, there, there's an old barge over to the right, on the back of Island 2, but it's in Viper's water. And there's some snag bushes, some really good snag bushes around that barge. And I went out there and I could see a fish in there, see a couple of fish actually, uh, but couldn't see properly what they were. Well, you can get around the back of the island and walk in to the back of the snags and get a much better look. So that's what I did. And I crept around there, looked in. Sure enough, it, it was the big one in there, Royds. Uh, and this was, this was the one fish I knew about. It has been 60 pound in the past, two or three times. So, and it was, the, it was definitely that fish. There was a little one next to it as well that looked minuscule beside it, probably a mid-double. And there was this great big grey mirror sitting on the bottom and I thought, oh, wow. I've certainly picked the right swim anyway. And uh, so I got my bait positioned as near as I could the other side of the bush. Uh, you know, knowing that this great big mirror is just in there, I mean, it baits just here. Needless to say, uh, that night I was 
didn't sleep much. I was, you know, just waiting for a run, which didn't come. I, expecting nothing to be there, I've, I've walked back round to have a look in the snags. It's still, still there. The, the big fish is still there, near enough in the same position what it was the day before. Oh, blimey, you know, it look, just looked like it was asleep. Um, so, put my rod back here, there, and anyway, cut a long story short, nothing happened. I didn't catch it. Next day, it was gone. Um, so I thought I'd missed a chance until probably four weeks later, someone said to me, oh, you know, the big one got caught a few weeks back. I said, but no, I didn't know. Uh, and that was when I learned, <laughs> you know, um, that, yeah, I, you don't get to hear a lot of the captures on this place. You know, people, for whatever reason, you know, they're entitled to keep it quiet. Of course they are. Um, but on most lakes, especially if it's the biggest fish in the lake, which turned out it was 58 pound or something, if that gets caught, you know, you normally hear a few rumours, you know, oh, did you hear the big one's been out? Nothing. It came out, got put back. It turns out I was fishing for a fish that had only been caught a couple of days earlier. So it was actually sitting in there sulking. <laughs> so that's why it looked like it was asleep. Um, I had absolutely no chance whatsoever of catching that. Um, yeah, I just felt like I'd just wasted two days of my life getting all excited for nothing, unfortunately. You know, and one thing that drives me mad about spring is spawning. And, uh, you know, that was always looming on here. People were trying to catch the big ones before spawning. And eventually, that's exactly what happened. A few fish got caught, but then they started to spawn. What I did was I took my chance to go on K1 next door because that was still open. That turned out to be really good. I did do a little video on my time there. Got a bit of floater fishing done, some nice fish. What it also gave me the chance to do was have a good look around here because there was, there was quite a few of the swims, like the snags. The all alone I had got in once, but it was quite tricky. Uh, the snags too, you know, all of those spring gates. All of a sudden, there was no people here. So it gave me that chance to come down and actually have a look around because you were still allowed to have a look around, obviously, you just weren't allowed to fish. So almost every day, I was just coming down in my boat just having a mooch around the lake and it was really good because it, the place was deserted the fish obviously knew that so they were acting quite natural it was just nice to see the areas where if and when i did have a chance to get in these swims i knew sort of where i'd want to be fishing so it'd save a lot of time uh, other things God, i mean look there was a great big carp hole that i found you know a massive great thing just dug out by the fish which was they're always amazing to see. Yeah, fish down there have just disturbed three mirrors, not big ones, but certainly in there. Yeah, see another one out. You probably can. Oh, well, that's, that's a better fish there. Yeah, there's one. Can you see him? And eventually, news come through that spawning looked like it had stopped and they was opening the swims back up. Spring gates definitely looked like the place to get in. Standing on the bridge, you know, I was seeing fish jumping out there. Uh, and even though I was, I was first one down, I, I was literally ready to go. And when the news come through, I was there expecting a queue at the gate and I was the only one there, I was first one there. Uh, so I jumped in spring gates, I could have gone in the snags and all them, but you know, spring gates it was. But, you know, all night it was quiet. And then when one did go off, um, I lost it. I just, it, the, the eel grass was really getting thick and it was right up on top. So you had no choice, but when you hooked one, just get out there in the boat for all this weed and make contact with the fish the other side. Only when I got out there, the fish had already gone. Of course, eventually some more people turned up. Um, Jason Plumbridge, he jumped in next door in Johnny Holtz and uh, Dave Salt, he went in further down in the secrets, so we was all in the line. And over the next, well, I suppose 12 hours, we all had one bite each. 
Uh, unfortunately, I was the only one to actually land a fish, and it was another small fish, a lovely linear, don't get me wrong, it was a nice linear, um, at 16 pound again, so um, again, you know, I'd caught a fish, put a fish on the bank, I, I was the only one who actually landed one out of us, um, but it was another small one, so I was beginning to sort of think to myself, um, what have I got to do to try and get a bigger one? I'd seen bigger ones everywhere I'd sort of been, I'd seen these small fish, but I'd seen bigger ones as well. And I sort of thought to myself, yeah, maybe I've got to change things around a little bit just to try and uh, target a bigger fish, maybe. Yeah, I decided that a, a change of presentation was in, in order. So uh, off came the, the little pop-up. I decided that perhaps the, the pop-ups, my little baits, little bright baits, were attracting the smaller fish, maybe. And so I swapped over to a slip D rig, but a size six long shank fang twister and a little snowman, a little, only small, uh, 15 mil bottom bait and a, a 12 mil pop up. So yeah, it's still a fairly small bait, but a change of presentation from a pop up down to a snowman. And I was baiting up, I was, I was using scope X squid all the time, obviously. Uh, still small baits, 15s, 12s, and the pellet. But I just made the change from a pop-up in that clear water looking so obvious to a, a snowman sort of resting on the bottom in tune more with the freebies that I was putting out. Next time I come down, some of the swims have been shut off again along the car park area. Uh, but the channel swim, hardly done a fish all year as it goes in the end, but it certainly hadn't done a fish up until that point. But yeah, I, I just thought, well, I'm just gonna jump in there and, and see what happens. It seems like everyone who fishes that swim, there's a snag on the far margin, so they either fish that snag, or indeed they fish to the rushes on the far margin. And, and that's what I did, first, first sort of evening, first night in there, that's what I did, fish that far margin. And I was getting liners through the night and in the morning, but when, I actually went out and looked. Uh, all my bait was still there. I could see it in the snag, untouched. And I thought, well, that, those fish aren't going along that far margin. They're, they're halfway between me and that margin. Some nice areas out there at short range, really short range, like 15, 20 yards out. To my knowledge, people don't normally fish those, but it looked to be the right thing to do. Uh, and sure enough, it was. I mean, as soon as I did that, I did that in the morning and by midday, early afternoon, I had a take on, on my left hand rod, um, played it for a while. Unfortunately, that one fell off. I knew I was on the right track. Anyway, following morning, early following morning, same rod was away and it, it was the 15, 20 yard rod out, you know, it weren't far out. Um, and I knew that was a better fish. I knew as soon as I was playing that, it was a better fish. And uh, yeah, I mean, after a, a decent battle, I got this mirror, a lovely long mirror, lovely round tail on it, 29-2. Um, and I was so happy with that, you wouldn't believe. It was, it was close to 30 pounds. So, you know, I'd gone from getting the, the smaller ones to getting one of these better fish, you know, a, a, a near 30 pound mirror, lovely, a proper one, that's what it felt like, a proper right. one. I actually had seven takes in, in the next two nights, two, two days, two nights. And, and the good thing was that they came on all three rods as well. It wasn't like I had one rod that was going, all three rods produced. So those fish were coming through that channel and my tactics worked out perfectly. The next one I had a, a 21 common, then a 1912 mirror, I did lose one more that I actually saw, and I, I know that was another small mirror, mate. And then the last two fish, both came on the right-hand rod. I could see them fizzing, I could see them jumping. Um, so I had, yeah, two nice mirrors, 26-12 and 23-12, two absolute crackers. And yeah, it gave me a proper battle as well. It was where that weed was coming out. I had uh, yeah, a proper battle with both of them. But um, yeah, absolutely two cracking fish and so I ended up that session uh, really in the two days when I got everything right 
I had five and lost two. As far as I know, there hasn't been another fish out of that swim the whole year. <sighs> so it was just right place, right time, right tactics. I got everything right that time, you know, and it felt good. The fish were better. I'd gone from doubles to at least getting good 20s, almost 30 pounds. So the, I felt like I was getting everything right at last. My first little foray into the swims up the top end brought me up to a swim they called Bev's on the top island. It was the first time fishing on the top island. And there's six swims on that, three on each side. And it, Bev's is like the middle one facing out to the main body of water. I, d I didn't catch anything basically. I did two nights up there in Bev's and didn't see anything, didn't hear anything on where I was fishing. The channel swim on the back it's only a few yards behind. I had a little look there and, and I saw a big mirror in there, you know, I don't know how big, a good mid 40 at least. Then I saw a fully scaled mirror, mid 20, and a 30 pound common. Really, I should have done another couple of nights and fished on that back end of the island because it ended up producing quite a few fish. The other th good thing to come out of fishing bevs, because there was no one else around, I did look at ar around different spots and next door to Bev's is a, a swim called the Plateau, which again, hardly seem to ever get fished, but I like the look of it. And I crept down into the Plateau's water while I had my rods in. I, I just went out there with a rod to have a little donk about and I could see this gap in the weed. And I thought, well, that looks like it should be a nice clear spot. Went out there, donk, donk, donk. And I thought, that, that looks a really nice spot and it don't get fished hardly you know I haven't seen anyone fish it so anyway that was that was something to log away which would come in really handy actually in time to come when I came back for my next few days the wind was blowing lovely up into the top corner with into a swim called the carpets so I've actually come up right up the lake into the carpets which I've not fished before. I've not fished up in this corner, but it just looks good with the wind blowing in. And apparently the lake's done a few fish the weekend, including over there in the alders, done a couple, two or three fish. Uh, the aquarium and the cup just the other side, that's done a couple of fish each as well. So they're up this end, apparently been boshing about. The wind's pushing up into this corner and so hopefully a few fish have followed it. So at least for tonight, this is going to be home and we'll see what happens. If it looks Nothing happened, no line, there's no bleeps. Uh, and I'd been getting up early all the time, you know, four o'clock in the morning, uh, between sort of half three and half four to see the fish jumping basically it was the best time to see them jumping well I had a lay in that morning because I thought well I've, I've just hadn't heard anything and then I was laying there and I heard a fish jump and it sounded half decent so I jumped up quick and it was flat calm out there and out to me right I could see these ripples spreading out and I thought God, that's a decent fish straight away I got one of my rods in and just went out to where I'd seen this fish so I sneaked there lowered it down donk donk it was nice and clear in between the weed beds perfect absolutely perfect so just a little handful of bait a few scope bit squids a few pellet get back out quick as possible well I obviously did it right because I dropped it at seven o'clock nine o'clock off it went
go on, son. Go on. Get it down. Lovely. God, what a battle that was. The first one over 30 pound at last. God, waiting a long time for a 30 pounder. Well, and smashed through 30, 30 pounds, 37 and a quarter. What a beauty, eh? God, I'm so pleased with that. Oh. There we go. that do, wouldn't it? 37 and a quarter. First proper big one. God. Very happy. Right, let's, let's get her back. Over the next few sessions, I kept catching, and uh, the action was pretty good, getting one, two, maybe three fish every time I was down. So it was good in that way, but the problem was, I was getting back to like, a smaller run of fish. Uh, there were some nice ones amongst them, for sure, but um, they were definitely getting back to that smaller range. So yeah, I had another rethink on tactics. Up until this point, I'd been using small baits, well, all the way through, really. I'd started off with the little pop-ups and then I'd moved on to snowmans, albeit with sort of smallish baits. So I decided that I should up the, the size of my hook baits. So I was quite happy using the Slip D rig. I kept the snowman but I swapped over to a 20mm bottom bait and a 15mm pop-up. I just hoped that that might help me get amongst some of those better ones. Next time down, and uh, Joan fancied coming out for a, a change. You know, a lot of the fishing down here had, had been on my own, and Joan had been stuck at home. Uh, and I, I didn't think she wanted to get down here that much, but um, she was getting bored at home, so she wanted to come fishing. So yeah, fair enough. Next time down, there was the two of us. That, of course, brings with it, you know, the problems of extra gear, you know, an extra bed chair, needed the, the bigger bivvy, which was the blockhouse is perfect, you know, it just fits in, a uh, swims a lot better than what you might think, and uh, it takes two bed chairs, so the blockhouse was ideal. Fishing with Joan, I knew I wasn't going to be moving around like I had been sometimes on my own, and, and that could be a good thing to actually settle into a swim and fish it properly. And the climbing tree was the swim. To be honest, it was a lot more weedy out there than what I thought. You know, I was expecting to go out there and find this great big clear channel, and it wasn't. There was a lot of weed there. But you know, after a bit of donking about and uh, looking, I found this, I did find a little clear area. Not very big, um, but enough to present a bait on, most definitely. So I felt really good about that one. Wasn't much showing or anything like that. Conditions-wise, it looked okay, um, but it was, it was pretty quiet otherwise. What we did get was quite a few liners on all different rods. So they was moving around all, and I thought, I'd almost switched off to it. I thought, am I going to get a run here or, or what? And it got to about six o'clock in the evening. You know, not, not a great time for a bite. All of a sudden, out of the blue, it just ripped off.
you beauty. Well, it's getting dark. I don't know how clearly you can see this, but um, oh, what a lovely surprise. 38 and a quarter. Oh, best one from here so far. God, gave a stonking run, went screaming off. Really good scrap as well. There we go. Just sat there patiently <laughs> for all these liners. Started to ignore them in the end. Eventually it just ripped off. God, happy days, eh? What a lovely car. Oh, we're getting there. There we go. Bringing me lucky charm work, didn't it? <laughs> Brought me some luck. Fantastic. Off you go. You know, that, that was my first trip out with the bigger baits and first bite with them, biggest fish I've caught so far. So I was really, really pleased with that. Uh, first time I brought Joan, you yeah, know, she was definitely a lucky mascot for me that trip. <laughs> I definitely wasn't leaving her at home again. <laughs> the time was, was starting to move on, starting to run out a little bit, if anything. You know, everyone told me that late autumn sort of end of october start of november the lake would generally switch off every year and you know no no fish would generally get caught again until the spring i really wanted to still get one of those big ones out of here or at least try and target one looking back at the captures of the big ones especially that big and roids a lot of the captures were were down the car park end and I did think to myself, you know, if I'm going to target that fish, I've got to target sort of where it lives. And with that in mind, we went into the All Alone Swim. Well, we did two nights there and didn't see a fish, didn't hear a fish. We'd done two nights and I just didn't fancy it. It just didn't look right. And we had some real big storms that day as well. It was like big storms coming through, but then little periods in between them where it was clear. And I said to Joan, oh, we've got to move. I think we're going to have to move. And she said, yeah, fine. So, I mean, it was going to, two boatloads, two, two trips up the lake. But I didn't even bother looking around up here. There was no one up here. But I, I just wanted to go straight for that plateau swim. The swims that got fished least up here, but it was the swim that I fancied out of all of them. The water has cleared up a little bit just recently but it's still the depths i want to fish like you know three and a half four meters it's um yeah you can't see down in those sort of depths i mean the best way to do it really is with the echo sounder so that's what i'm doing there's, there's lots of weed out here as you can see i'm probably going over four meters of water but it's showing up as two meters loads of jagged lines which is just weed beds, weed coming up off the bottom. Almost every swim that does have little clear spots and I just find the echo sound is actually the, the easiest way to find them. You know, as long as you know roughly where you want to fish. Um, yeah, all of a sudden it just shows up different little clear spots. Yeah, there we go. You can all, all of a sudden, you can see the the bottom the bottom shows up and those big jagged lines disappear and you've got flat bottom there and uh, they're not big spots they're only little so you know you do have to sort of still donk the lead about to make sure you you're actually on the right spot there look at that that's it 3.5 and you can see the flat bottom there and that's clean perfect that's the spot. Dunk. Yeah.
flat as a pancake there and rock hard. blown away to be honest. Spent a lot of nights throughout this year from May up till now just hoping to get one of those big ones and uh, yeah finally it's happened end of September after a lot of nights and quite a bit of action. I've had this is my 22nd take I think but uh, not only got a big one I've got the biggest Royce God. 57.2 Weighed it three times, weighed it a couple of times and thought it can't be right surely and uh, eventually tied the uh, scales onto the oar, put it on our shoulders and sure enough 57 two. What an absolute <laughs> result. Tried all different things, different areas. In the end what I had to do was bring Joan. <laughs> this last couple of times I fish with Joan. Oh, I've had the two best fish. Heavy. That'll have to do, I think. <laughs> oh. That's what I wanted. Waited all year for that. Got there in the end. Right, that do Let's get back. Catching roids was, was everything I'd hoped and dreamed of. It was everything I wanted when I first came on here. Uh, and, and more than I dared dream of really, getting the biggest fish in the lake. But I'd done it, you know, I'd got the biggest fish in the lake and uh, in a lot of cases that would be enough to sort of pack up and, and pull off. You know, on the mirror, when you caught the black mirror, that was it, you, you packed up and went. There, there was plenty of other good fish out there that were, were still due out basically and others that I'd like to catch and was just enjoying being here really you know it's nice being here with Joan and uh, she <laughs> she had only just started coming down with me so yeah we stayed on a couple of days um, 
it was fairly quiet until the last morning just before we was going to pack up and then that close rod well uh, that one burst into life and usual story went straight into a ball of weed so out in the boat I went I was, wasn't sure if he was in there or not, but he is. It wasn't much of a fight, it just a big ball of weed. But yeah, what a cracker. Lovely way to finish up, that is. Just over £29 of uh, lovely, scaly, Colm Valley Island Lake mirror. It just showed there was um, still more to be caught, so I know I could have been forgiven for packing up and saying that was it. You know, there was still a bit of time left we had to come back for at least one more session you know that we both agreed that a few days time we would be back for another few days on the lake sure enough we were back again and it was fairly quiet still the lake at least when we arrived um straight back in the plateau swim you know no messing about just straight up straight in there and if nothing happened didn't matter you know, I caught that lovely great big fish the week before and uh, anything else after that was a bonus and that was the, definitely the way it felt. First, first morning, you know, first night was fairly quiet, heard a few fish jump again. Early hours in the morning, away it went again. Different rod this one. This was actually on the right hand rod. Um, there's an old barge out there and it was just around that sort of area. Couldn't actually see the barge but I found this little clear spot. And it was that rod that went off. So I'd had three bites. I'd had the big one on the longer rod, 29 on the close in one to the left. And this was now the third different spot that I'd had a, a bite on in, in those two short sessions. Again, a boat job, went out there in the boat. And again, I, I could tell that this was a good fish. It was a really good fish. Just that, again, it was weed on the line. That, was, that always happened but I could feel the fish clear enough and it was plodding around and it was slow and it felt good. And when it came up, uh, I just thought to myself, it's another good one, it's another good one. And uh, yeah, I mean, sure enough it was. <sighs> Absolute belter of a great chunk, 42 and a half. Great big chunk of a mirror, beautiful. Whew. Funny you know, early in the year, kept getting those smaller ones and 29 was the biggest fish I'd had in amongst all of them. And now in the last few weeks, yeah, 29 is the smallest I've had. Yeah, so there we are, you know, that's my season on the Island Lake, just about finished now. There's a definite nip in the air today. The lake's very quiet, there's only a couple of other people on. And uh, yeah, it, it looks, it's got a different feel about it, you know, it definitely looks and it feels like it's starting to close down. You know, we wasn't able to get away this year, but that gave me the time to get on here and, and give it my full attention do a proper campaign and it's worked out perfectly you know and I've loved every minute of it yeah sure you know 
I'll probably come back next year because there's fish still to be caught out there. There's lots of big fish that haven't even turned up this year. And so, yeah, maybe next year, come back and try for a few of those. Um, but yeah, what a year it's been. Loved every minute of it.